Hello everyone, my name's Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, the BMW R1250RT. I happen to think that this is probably the finest touring motorcycle in the world ever created. And if you want to know why, you'll have to stay tuned for my upcoming full review of this bike. However, today I want to show you eight incredible features of the bike that help make it stand out among all of its competition and help make it one of the ultimate luxury sports touring bikes ever produced. All right, so if I had to pick one of my absolute favorite features of the RT, it's got to be the what they call active cruise control. I call it adaptive cruise control. Basically, it's a radar guided cruise control system. The reason that this is so good to have on a touring motorcycle is that, well, look right now, this is a perfect example of a normal situation. I'm on the freeway. I have the cruise set at 82, um, but the traffic keeps going slow and then fast and slow and then fast. So I set the distance I want here. I've got it in a medium distance, which is about three seconds behind that uh, blue forerunner and it keeps me at that distance. I don't have to do anything to the throttle or the brake. And if the traffic slows down pretty, even if it's pretty abrupt and pretty hard braking, the bike, because of its linked brakes and all the computer whiz bang stuff that it has, the bike will brake pretty hard for you. Now it's not a substitute for your own intervention and all those disclaimers, but in my experience, the thing will brake surprisingly hard to keep you, uh, to keep that gap of the traffic in front of you. It's not designed to be self-riding or self-driving autonomous or that, but it's a huge uh, aid. And as, as that traffic up there starts to speed up, the motorcycle will accelerate. Uh, and and you can you could do this for hours at a time and and if you think about that on a long day of riding how much energy that saves you by not having to regulate your speed like that on the highway it's it's quite incredible now you're gonna ask okay well what if you what if you pass so if I pull in behind this faster car the motorcycle because it has the radar sensors and everything else it knows that I did that and it's gonna accelerate now this car is not going that fast but we're gonna end up passing the car that I was behind. So it does have a passing feature where it accelerates. It doesn't maybe accelerate as fast as you might normally, but it does a pretty good job. So see right now we're passing that car and I, didn't ha I never touched the throttle in this whole situation. So it's really an amazing feature. And it not only works on the highway, but it works on twisty roads. It works if you're following groups of motorcycles or other bikes, it works pretty much even in town. It's uh, quite an astonishing feature and it's something that a lot of riders will truly appreciate and benefit from. So the radar adaptive cruise control is not just useful on the big open kind of motorways, but it's also useful uh, here on a smaller uh, highway like this because I've got my cruise set at 65, but I'm behind a bunch of cars and they kind of go slow around the corners and then they speed up and then there's trucks and things. So instead of, you know, modulating the speed on my own, I can just sit back and let the bike do it. Now, of course, this is not a substitute for actually riding the bike and being in control, but it really saves uh, your energy on a long day of riding. So it's just pacing. This is the middle distance right here. So this is two bars following distance and it's keeping me about uh, maybe three seconds or so behind. Now watch this. It's going to brake. The bike is doing all this braking for me. See how that car turned there and this line of cars really came to a kind of a quick stop or not a stop, but slowed down. The bike slowed down from 60 to 40, kept the distance from that car and is now keeping pace with that line of traffic. And I haven't touched anything. That's how incredible this system is. All right, another feature that makes the RT pretty special among touring bikes is this guy right here. This is BMW's Boxer engine. Now, BMW has been using Boxer motors and motorcycles for a very, very long time. There's some interesting things about the Boxer engine. The one thing that people talk about the most, and I really do agree with, is that the design of the engine keeps the weight of the motorcycle, a lot of the weight anyway, down lower in the chassis of the bike. That means that the motorcycle feels less heavy than it is, and it handles better than it has any right to. Pull out of the corner. Trail brake. Wow. It goes from side to side so well. I mean, look at this thing. It's insane. This is insane how well this handles. 
Some other things that's nice about having a boxer engine design is because you have some of the engine exposed to the cooling airflow of the wind, they can uh, uh, use some air cooling along with a mix of water cooling that they also do use in these modern boxer engines. These modern boxer 1250 engines make a lot of torque. Uh, 106 foot pounds of torque is really a lot for a motorcycle like this and it gives the motor a feeling of uh, very, very strong pull and strong grunt. Another thing I like about the Boxer engines is that they're a bit easier to service because when you have to do a valve clearance inspection, the valve's right here. All you have to do is pop these covers off, take a couple things off, and your valve's right here. There's no taking apart half the motorcycle to get to the valves to do your valve inspection adjustment. So that's a really another nice feature. So I really do like the Boxer engine on this bike and it makes it pretty special among touring bikes out there. All right, I'm out here at night uh, to show you this feature of the bike that I really, really love. So first of all, you can kind of see the lighting uh, signature on the bike. It's pretty well lit up. Of course, you've got that big dashboard, kind of cool front. This is just the running light, not the low beam. So what I want to talk about is the RT's adaptive headlight. So what does adaptive mean? Well, I'm going to show you here right now. So... Now, it's very hard to film a headlight in a video like this, but because the RT has so much light, I think it does help. So I've got the fog lights on and I've got my low beam on right now. So as we go through this corner, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but the headlight actually rotates and tilts so that as you're riding the motorcycle through a corner, uh, the headlight goes through the corner so you can see up ahead. Now, this is not the only motorcycle that has adaptive headlights. Um, there are a few others, including some BMWs, but it is a pretty rare feature. Overall, the lighting on the RT, the, the factory lighting, is one of the best it, of any motorcycle that I've ever ridden, and probably is one of the best lighting setups on any production motorcycle. Uh, there's a lot of light. It's spread out really well. Let me turn on the high beam here. And the fact that I have a light that steers with me through corners so I can actually see what's coming up ahead allows me so much more confidence when I have to ride at night. So if there's a deer or a rock or like earlier tonight, I almost hit a giant snake, if you can believe it. If there's anything up there, I'm going to be able to see it and hopefully, you know, have time to react. So I love the adaptive lights. I like the fog lights. The lights are insanely, uh, insanely effective for a motorcycle. There's a piece of wood in the road. So see, it just goes to show you that if you're going to ride a motorcycle at night, which a lot of RT riders will because they tend to be hardcore touring riders, then this is a really, really awesome feature that helps set this bike apart from a lot of other motorcycles. <laughs> All right, another great feature of the R1250 RT is the TFT dashboard. Now, yes, there are a lot of motor modern motorcycles that have TFT dashboards. However, the display on this uh, RT is one of the best out there. It's 10 and a quarter inches uh, diagonal. The other thing that's somewhat unique about it that I really do like is it's a landscape orientation. So if you've seen some motorcycle screens, they're more of a square uh, design, uh, but this is really a landscape design and I really like how that allows you to present information. If you just want the tachometer and the speed and your basic information, uh, you can have the screen here. But if you use the multi-controller, you can also scroll through uh, different displays here on the right. So having, and of course, if we go down in the menu, you can then, uh, you know, do your settings, see your vehicle information, look at your trip computers, control your audio, control your multimedia. So I really, this is one of the best screens in the business. It's also visible in just about any lighting condition. It doesn't have glare because it has kind of a matte finish and it's very sharp and contrasty. So I really do appreciate the screen on the RT. It's one of the best of any motorcycles 
uh, that I've tested and really helps this bike stand out. All right, so another amazing feature of the BMW RT, and this is not the only bike out there that has this. Other BMWs have it, some Ducatis have it, Triumphs have it now, is Electronic Suspension Adjustment, or ESA. Now, the reason that that's so awesome on a motorcycle like this is because this is really a bike designed for long distance touring. When you're in the road mode or even the rain mode, you get a super plush, super soft, suspension ride it floats over the bumps it rides like a cadillac but when you want to get on a twisty road like this and really start to get after it if you don't want that kind of bouncy floaty feeling you just hit mode and go into dynamic mode this changes your ride mode it sharpens your throttle response but it also greatly firms up the suspension damping now you can also change the damping separately from the ride mode. If you just want to change the damping and not the throttle response, you can do that in the menu system of the bike. But now, now that I've got the firm suspension damping, I can really get after it in these corners. And when I hit bumps in the middle of the corner, the firmer suspension damping really allows me to have that, the control of the bike, the firmer chassis feel that I wanna have. If I really wanna attack these corners. And let me tell you right now, the RT is one of the most incredible handling motorcycles for twisty roads that I've ever tested. I mean, it's even better than some of the so-called sport bikes or sporty bikes that I've tested. It's simply phenomenal. It doesn't feel like 600 pounds whatsoever. So the ESA is super, super nice. And when you're ready to cruise again and go back into soft mode, all you do is go back into road mode and all of a sudden you feel the bike just wafting down the road like you're riding on a cloud. So really awesome feature to have. A couple more things since we're talking about how incredible the suspension is on the RT. So not only we've talked about the electronic suspension adjustment ESA, how you can tune it for different, uh, you know, different uh, riding situations like corners like this. Man, this bike handles amazing. Um, the other things about the ESA is that it compensates for load. So when you get a passenger or you load this bike up with cargo, uh, the rear end, the preload adjusts automatically because it senses the weight. You can also take manual control of that. The other thing about the tail lever suspension is that when you fly into a corner and let's say, oh, hard on brakes, hard on brakes, you notice something different about this bike and the GS is the same way, but the motorcycle doesn't dive in the front. There's no, there's no brake dive. So it doesn't upset the balance of the chassis when you're hard into the brakes. So you can literally put the brakes on like just all the way and the bike kind of just settles down like it goes down but it doesn't go nose down in the front like every other motorcycle with the conventional fork does it's because of the unique setup of the tail lever the way that that works and i'm a huge fan of the tail lever i always have been uh some people say that oh you don't get as much feel from the front tire like sport bike guys will say that but i think for real world applications touring sport touring commuting you know just actual riding on the road and not a racetrack or something it's great all right another great feature of the rt now obviously this motorcycle comes with the integrated saddlebags which have a lot of capacity and they're a very nice bag but the thing i want to talk about is that they're central locking now what does central locking mean so on bikes like this the golding also has this a few of the other competitors there's a button right here to lock the bags, and there's also a button on the key fob. So here's how this works. So normally, you can open the bags by pressing this button here if they're in the unlock position. You can go ahead and open up your saddlebag like that. Close the bag. Now, when you wanna walk away from the bike, go to your hotel, go to the cafe, whatever it is, go away for the night, you can either press this button here and your luggage is now locked. You don't have to do anything else. Or you can use the key fob as well. This is the alarm sound that you're hearing. Then I can unlock and also deactivate the alarm with the key fob. Now, some bikes don't have the alarm, some do. This one does have the alarm. If you have the alarm, then uh, you can activate it through here. You can also turn the alarm off if you don't want it in the, uh, in the settings of the bike. But we have it activated for here. It's also nice to have an alarm. But the central locking bags are super, super convenient to have when you're touring. Now, if you wanna take them saddlebags off, all you do, you do have to put the key in for this. Twist it here to the release position. 
twist it, and then th this handle will lift up, and then you can remove the saddlebag from the motorcycle if you want to ride without saddlebags or if you want to take your saddlebag maybe into the hotel with you. I'm putting it back on. It's kind of hard to do this while I'm filming, um, but it's pretty simple to do. You line these things up, push it on. Actually, yeah, I was able to do that one-handed, so not a bad system. Another amazing feature of the RT, and there's not many motorcycles out there that have this, is an electrically adjustable windshield. The reason that this is so amazing is that when I'm on a highway like this going 75, 80 miles an hour, or something like that, I can have this windshield cranked way up. See, there's a button right here. So I can have it cranked way up and I, my head is completely out of the wind. Like completely. I feel a little, a little wind on my shoulders and kind of hitting my back a little bit. There's a little back pressure when the screen's all the way up. But it has incredible protection. So if it's cold, if I just need the wind off of me just so I don't have the noise and the buffeting, it's amazing. But then when you get hot and you want some airflow, er, it just, and look at the range of adjustment that it has. So all the way down, I get nice cooling air on my helmet. When I'm in, in the city or slower speeds or in the canyons, I can have this down out of the way. I can look over the shield. But then when I want the ultimate protection up here on the motorway, I just hit this button and I'm just in a cocoon of silent still air. And this is the factory standard windshield, by the way. All right, another truly awesome feature of the RT, and some other uh, BMW models have this, and of all the manufacturers, I think BMW does this the best from my testing. There's something called linked braking. Uh, Goldwings also have this, if you've watched my videos on that. So what the linked braking does is it basically emulates what the best riders and racers in the world, how they brake on their motorcycle. So what you get is, when you activate the front brake lever, the rear brake also activates automatically at a much lower level. I think it's something like 90%, 10%, or like something like that. It's it's like, you know, 20% rear brake compared to what the front brake's doing, which is basically what the best riders in the world do on their, on their super bikes if they're racing or going on the canyon road as fast as they can. The reason it does that is because you can maximize your braking potential from the motorcycle but also having a little bit of rear brake activate um, without having to even touch the rear brake lever. It keeps the motorcycle super stable when you want to brake. So I can show you here if I'm going 65 miles an hour and what I'm going to do is just grab the front brake lever as hard as I can. There's no one behind me. I'm not going to touch the rear brake. So this thing stops. <laughs> it literally will stop on a dime it's pretty incredible the confidence of the braking system of this bike because of the link brakes and how the abs works of course you also have an imu in this bike to measure the the, the motion of the bike and the, the lean angle and everything so if you're on a corner it's going to adjust for that all those kinds of conditions but basically what it boils down to is you just have incredible incredible braking so if an animal comes out if a car pulls out in front of you whatever it is uh, or there's a rock in the road I don't know um, you can stop the bike so quickly for a 600 pound touring motorcycle and I love the link braking system the GS's also have this it even works in the dirt on the GS because it just balances the bike so well uh, really an awesome feature to have and I wish more motorcycles would adopt link brakes I think they're when they're done well it's an incredible system that adds to the safety the confidence and enjoyment of the bike all right well that about wraps it up for the eight incredible features that help make the RT so special of course I couldn't cover everything in this video and you may agree or disagree with the features I chose but I'm just trying to drive home the point that BMW really, really knows how to engineer and design the ultimate touring motorcycle. And these features are just part of the proof of that. Now, stay tuned for my full in-depth review on the RT and to find out why I honestly believe this is the best touring motorcycle ever created. Thank you so much for watching. Please ride safe and I'll see you out there.